Welcome to 8.3. <clears throat> we are going to figure out, what is it, five different ways, five different ways here that we can use to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So that's what we're all about here, is proving, ways of proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Remember back in 8.2, we were told that it is a parallelogram <clears throat> and then we found or discovered or were told <laughs> uh, four different characteristics about those parallelograms. If it is a parallelogram, then we know that its opposite sides are congruent and opposite angles are also congruent. And then we also know that consecutive angles are supplementary and that the, its diagonals intersect or bisect, that's a better way of saying it, more exact way, uh, they bisect each other. Okay, so those are four characteristics that are true about, or once we are told that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if parallelogram, then each of these four things are true. What we're doing now is saying, okay, how can we prove whether a quadrilateral is a parallelogram? And here are our five different ways. <clears throat> the first way is just the plain old definition of a parallelogram, which is that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. That's really the definition of parallelogram. So of course, if the both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then it is a parallelogram. Secondly, a second way to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram is it when both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. And that's exactly the same thing that we just said here, right? That if it is a parallelogram, then both sides are, are um, congruent. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Remember, I did say in the video, that the converse of this is also true. So that's all we're saying now, that if you're looking at a quadrilateral and both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then you know it is a parallelogram. That's what we're saying here, okay? It's also true that if uh, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then we know that it is a parallelogram because that's the converse of what this was. That if it's a parallelogram, then both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So the converse is also true, that if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then it is a parallelogram. That's what this is saying here. Okay, so let's do some examples. <coughs> so here, Ooh, good. in your book is, have you ever seen one of these rides? These are pretty cool, aren't they? Um, I've seen them like, like Magic Genie sort of rides. Here you hop in the, the top. Well, of course, you get into it when it's down here. And then it starts swinging back and forth until it gets high enough that it can, whoa, go over the top and then zoom down the bottom, all that cool sort of thing. So what's going on here is this is a parallelogram. But wait a second. I am not told that it is a parallelogram, but I can prove that it is a parallelogram. And how can I prove it? Well, you measure the distance uh, of this side here between the two towers, and then you measure the distance of the sled between the uh, points where it's uh, hitched onto uh, there. And if that dis those distances are the same, then these two sides, these opposite, this pair of opposite sides are congruent. And then if the, what would this be, like this bo these bars uh, are, it wouldn't be ropes, would it? <laughs> that would be crazy if these were flexible ropes. But uh, these bars, um, if they are the same length, then this pair of opposite sides are also congruent. And that is all that we need to know to prove that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And therefore, this 
top sled here will always be parallel to this other side. Doesn't matter where, where you swing this thing around, it's always going to be parallel uh, to this side. And of course, if your towers, the height here is the same uh, to the ground, then the, uh, the ground is parallel to, or this um, um, bar across here, or this distance, or the side <laughs> of the parallelogram is parallel to the ground. So therefore, the sled will always be parallel to this side, which is parallel to the ground, is the point that they are making there. Hey, let's now look at uh, how to prove. Let me prove to you, I think I can do this here, uh, um, why this is the case. Why is it that if I only have, if I, all that I need to know is that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, that that is sufficient to prove that it is a parallelogram. And the reason for that is because I can, or the way I can prove that, is by creating a diagonal here. And so now I have this top left triangle and this bottom right triangle. And notice I have a pair of sides, because what I want to do is prove that these two triangles are congruent. Here's a pair of sides. Here's another pair of sides that are congruent. So I have side side. Now is that sufficient? to prove congruence between these two triangles? No, it's not. I need something else. And hey, this side, this blue side for the top triangle is congruent to the blue side for the bottom triangle based upon what property of equality? And it is the reflexive property. So now I have side, side, side. So based upon side, 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 these two triangles are congruent. Uh, therefore, these uh, angles uh, here will also be congruent, corresponding, remember CP, CTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are, are congruent. And because these uh, angles here, think of this as your transversal, and these two lines are, here's your two lines, and this is your transversal across those. So these are alternate interior uh, angles. And when alternate interior angles are congruent, then the two, so, two uh, lines are congruent. Okay, so I've just proved that those two lines are congruent, and I can do the same thing with, uh, with these two, that these two lines are also congruent in the same or similar way. Pretty neat. So again, we have three different ways now to prove that a quadrilateral is a um, parallelogram. One, by having both pairs of opposite sides being parallel, or if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, that's sufficient, or if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. All that is sufficient, or any one of those, is sufficient to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Here are two more. Here's one that, uh, and we did this in the, when we were constructing a parallelogram using our compass and our, that's it, we just used the compass, right? And a, and a, a straight edge. Uh, remember how we did that? <clears throat> we first made sure we created this other line that was parallel uh, to this uh, first line, our first uh, segment. And then we made this uh, segment up on top uh, the same length as the bottom segment. And so we said that uh, these two uh, opposite, or this pair of opposite sides are not only parallel, but they're also congruent. And that is sufficient to prove congruence between, no, what? <laughs> that is sufficient to uh, prove that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. There we go. I started to think about triangles there. Okay, that's all you need. And then lastly, that uh, the diagonals. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral uh, bisect each other, what does that mean to, to bisect each other? It means that they cross at the midpoint for each other. And I had a big fat M on top here, but it kind of got rubbed off. All right, so uh, put a, a big old fat M there <clears throat> for this point. 
because that is a midpoint for uh, this blue uh, diagonal. It's also a midpoint for this red diagonal because these diagonals uh, bisect each other. So they intersect each other uh, at each other's midpoint. So if that's the case, if that is all that I know, that, that is all that I need to know about a quadrilateral, is that the, bi the diagonals bisect each other. That's all I need to know to be able to prove that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, let me show you a few examples of what we can do with that information. Here they're telling us this is an old doorway. We have a building in England, and over time this thing has shifted over to the side. So if we were to measure, though, they're telling us, though, that uh, these two opposite sides of the doorway, the, what is that, baseboard or stepboard or what's it called as you walk in? I forget now. Uh, and also the top of the doorway, they are parallel to each other, and they're also the same length, therefore they're congruent. And that's all that we need to know to know that uh, this is a parallelogram. I do not have to do any measurements on these sides or the angles or anything else. All I need to know is that they're parallel, which is not easy to do in the field, but they're telling us that these are parallel and also that they are the same length. In other words, they're congruent. And that's sufficient to prove that uh, this entire quadrilateral is a um, parallelogram. Okay, so here they're asking uh, for what value of x, what value of x would I need to put in here to make this quadrilateral a parallelogram? Well, in order to make this a parallelogram, uh, there's all kinds of different ways to prove that it is a parallelogram, but they're talking about diagonals here. So what is it that has to be true about the diagonals in order for this to be a parallelogram? The diagonals have to intersect, not just intersect. Stop saying that, man. Uh, they have to bisect uh, each other. And so if they were bisecting each other, then it would mean that this is the midpoint of this diagonal, and it is because they have those tick marks there. And this would also have to be the midpoint of this horizontal diagonal. And if this was, or to make this the midpoint of this horizontal diagonal, then uh, these two segments would need to be congruent to each other, meaning they would have to have the same length, meaning that 5x minus 8 would need to equal 3x. So there is your equation. In order to make this into a parallelogram, uh, 5x minus 8 has to equal 3x. And then it's just a simple uh, algebra problem. To be able to solve this dude for x, what would you do here? Subtract 3x from both sides, add 8 to both sides, and then divide both sides by 2, and you get x equals 4. Bada bing, you got it. And I think they're also asking for what? No, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. thought maybe they were asking for the length of a side. Yeah, here they I think they are. Here they're asking for, remember uh, DN, when it just has a, two letters there, what's that referring to? The length of segment DN. So how do you find the length of segment DN? You plug X in, your value of X in for into 3X, or you could even plug it into over here, uh, 5X minus 8, because both these segments are congruent, because this guy is the midpoint. Bada bing! Okay, I think you are ready to roll. <clears throat> in quadrilateral WXYZ, so now you're thinking, okay, what does that quadrilateral, quadrilateral look like? And they are saying, is this a parallelogram? So draw a diagram. Draw a diagram of a parallelogram. Doesn't have to be fancy, just throw a diagram down here that looks similar to kind of like one of these guys here. Doesn't matter what angle it's uh, at or whatever. Just as long as it looks kind of like a parallelogram. And then label your endpoints and make sure, your vertices, make sure that as you label them, does not matter where you put the W, but make sure that the X is going to be a consecutive, or the 
consecutive or and <laughs> a consecutive uh, uh, vertex and then keep on going around in the same direction so if you started with W here and did X here then make sure this is Y and this is Z see what I'm talking about or if you put W here uh, and you had X then make sure this Y and Z so the sequence here is important and then label the measures of these angles remember with uh, me labeling measures of angles you always put them inside of the angles and then they want us to find the uh, fourth uh, angle and you know how to find the fourth angle from back here Let's see, hold on. oh I know yeah <clears throat> what you want to do is uh, you remember what the where is it here you remember no it's not here yeah it is here you, you remember that the uh, uh, sum of the interior angles of any polygon any convex polygon is n minus 2 times 180 so the sum um, of uh, of the interior angles of a quadrilateral you can put the 4 in there for 4 sides 4 minus 2 is 2 2 times 180 is 360 so you know the sum of the these interior angles uh, has to be 360 so that enables you to find <clears throat> the fourth side by adding those together subtracting that from uh, 360 and then look at these angles and see if knowing those angles is that does that give me enough information to prove that it is a parallelogram in other words are the uh, both pairs of opposite angles are they congruent with each other okay so I'll let you draw that diagram and then explain put that emphasis there give me words man give me sentences write me sentences and explain how you know that this parallelogram oops this uh, quadrilateral is a parallelogram and then here are some other examples of quadrilaterals so can you prove to me that this is a quadrilateral if so then write out give me a sentence here uh, explaining uh, which one of these don't just say number four uh, write out the uh, um, theorem that you're using to be able to prove that uh, this quadrilateral is a parallelogram and then do the same thing with these two so I need three different sentences that are written in here I'll let you figure out how to or where to write them in but write them in there somewhere and then number five uh, for what value of X um, is this uh, hey this is very similar to what I just did before right it's very similar to this guy I'm not gonna waste your time explaining the hold in your hand you can do that on your own but but uh, back up the video if you need to uh, for this explanation it'll help you with how to do this guy okay hope that was helpful we'll see you in class may the Lord bless you